I'm wondering the um the materials I'm using right now you know I'm not really doing too much you know what I'm saying I do got the clipper oil and then they're called the wall hero trimmers they're actually made for styling but I think they're good when you're cutting your own hair for base core quality the most important quality of a leader is their ability and their willingness to fight in their background fighting now I think it's important to clarify that because a lot of people can interpret fighting as just raw aggression blind aggression and that's definitely not the case at all it's definitely not blind aggression it's aggression towards the direction in which you are leading it's fighting for what you believe in and fighting for the people that follow you so to be honest if you run around just looking for smoke <laughs> you're gonna find it and it don't matter how big and tough you are Eventually, you're going to find it in an area that you're not an expert in. And that's the difference between blind aggressive people that just be fighting anything and leaders. Leaders don't usually lose as many fights. That's the reason why they are leaders. That's the reason why people follow them. But they also don't lose a lot because they're very familiar with the area in which they're leading. And that's the difference between a true leader and a false leader. See, a false leader is going to constantly be using all these different things to compensate for their lack of outcome, whereas a real leader is going to be creating outcome and have a history of outcome. I think I mentioned earlier in this video, everyone wants to be a leader. I mean, everyone wants to try it out. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'll say one key difference between a natural born leader and just someone who's very persistent and just determined to be a good leader is that a natural born leader, when they're in a situation where there is leadership and they're not leading, then everyone around knows that there's a problem. Because typically, people are gonna prefer to be led by someone who's a natural born leader. And for whatever reason, instinctually, they're gonna know who the natural born leaders are. People just, they just get behind you. And, you know, you may not even know why, but they get behind you. And you may know that you're a natural born leader also because in situations when you don't lead, you realize that it creates conflict amongst the people that that want to follow. Because not everyone has the talent, the threshold, and even the desire to fight as much as you fight. Because that's really what leadership is. It is fighting for what it is that you believe. The biggest mistake that people that aspire to be leaders and that really fight to be leaders that might not necessarily be natural born leaders have is they usually make the mistake of believing that the leadership is actually done for just purposeless glory or just attention or just self-idolization to say oh this person is a leader therefore he must be the best that's not what leadership is about. And that's why people that are not natural born leaders usually struggle with leadership. Because ultimately, the leadership is about the mission. All right, hold on for just a second. Ooh, whoa. Like this video if you like Vega. I mean, like this video if you like Vega, and like this video if you like uh, Ball Rock. Try this shit. <clears throat> Most <clears throat> natural born leaders have a lot of natural born instincts, or I'm sorry, natural born interests. And a lot of the natural born interests are going to be things that pertain to groups of people and leading groups of people. Things such as psychology. Psychology is a big thing that natural born leaders are interested in because ultimately, usually whatever they're leading, whatever their purpose has to do with, it usually has something to do with changing psychology. So they're always interested in psychology. A natural born leader knows that if they do not effectively lead, then the ship that they are sailing is gonna work against them. And that is the one true thing 
that that you have to realize if you are going to leave is that <clears throat> whatever you are leaving or whatever direction you're going to go into it can't be for self-serving purposes because if it is you're either going to have a very weak following an extremely weak purpose or when the people that are following you realize that there's nothing at the end of that rainbow but just a picture of you they're going to be upset a leader doesn't really need to necessarily have followers in order to be a leader they just have to have their own sense of direction they have to lead themselves they have to be able to lead themselves in fact most natural born leaders are probably if they're anything like me they're going to struggle in the early stages just leading themselves and it's through leading yourself that you can develop understanding of what it takes to see your direction or to, to fulfill whatever direction it is you will ultimately lead. That is one another really big character of natural leaders is that there usually is some sort of conflict within their own life or within themselves that they derive a lot of their knowledge from. Oh, this music is, is freaking, freaking blast. Hold on. The best leaders are the best followers and the best followers are the best leaders. And that is true. But one characteristic of a true natural born leader is that a natural born leader at some point is going to either lead or just be stuck in misery. Because there isn't going to be any other way. They're not going to be allowed to follow anyone because their natural qualities are going to exude from them whether they utilize them or not. If they don't utilize those qualities, then the person that they do follow is going to utilize them for them. This is gonna be one that's gonna really make one people, people want to be a leader. And I'm gonna be honest, guys, it, it's a double-edged sword. Natural born leaders and leaders in general are people that are good at just about everything. And for that reason, they can't really follow. They're like naturally talented in that regard. But it's by design, it's because of the way they think. Natural born interest. And a lot of the natural born interests are gonna be things that pertain to groups of people and leading groups of people. Things such as psychology. Psychology is a big thing that natural born leaders are interested in because ultimately, usually whatever they're leading, whatever their purpose has to do with, it usually has something to do with changing psychology. So they're always interested in psychology. I found a big issue with myself and what I've seen with other leaders is being able to focus all that, all that talent and actually being able to use that talent. Because a lot of times that talent, it's, it's, it's a gift and a curse in that it, it, it kind of like highlights you. And I keep repeating, you know, if you don't use your talent of leadership, then it's gonna be work against you. Just because you are not a natural born leader, it doesn't mean you cannot be an exceptional leader. In fact, you can be a better leader than a lot of natural born leaders by really possessing one core quality. And this is a core quality that really separates the best leaders from the worst. And uh, well, not even the best, but the most effective leaders from the most ineffective. And that is judgment. See, a good leader has really good judgment. It's judgment that's built over time through leadership. So um, if, uh, if anyone out there really wants to become a good leader or if they have a goal in mind or something that they want to achieve and they say well damn you know i'm not exactly you know seven foot tall and i'm not exactly the most you know athletic person in the world well they can achieve that by just being good at making decisions having really good judgment because ultimately that's really what a leader is it's a person that makes decisions leading up to uh, a greater purpose for a group of people that have issues or may not be as keen on navigating those decisions. The leader gives the people that he leads and ultimately his dreams faith. And that's really what separates real leaders from fake leaders, good leaders from bad leaders. It's just simply understanding that you're leading towards something outside of yourself. <clears throat> That's really what gives you purpose. That's really what wakes you up in the morning. And that's really the reason why you fight so much. That's the reason why leaders fight so much. That's the difference between a natural born leader. That's the reason why fake leaders never really win because 
it won't keep you up late enough. You won't be into it enough. You know, you'll just be one of those miserable people with a huge bottom line or whatever, top line, I don't even know what it is. Huge bottom line and you'll be bored to death. It's funny, like one thing that like one of my relatives says is, uh, you know, you can have a lot of money, but the one thing you can't buy is access. And uh, the only way you get access is with purpose. And the only way you can achieve purpose is by following, by having some sort of righteous cause that you follow truly because it's part of who you are and what you believe or because, you know, you are leading some type of righteous cause. That's the only way you get that access. And you can look at it through any way you look at it. Or to be that person, or even just to be that follower, it comes from, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it always comes from here. You always get what's truly in your heart. <clears throat> so if you want to be a leader, or if you want to lead towards something, it's really just a matter of figuring out if it's really something that's in your heart or not. If it's not a passion of yours, if it's not something that you really, really love to do, then when you become a leader, you're going to struggle. When you become a leader, you're going to be up late at night. You're going to be falling asleep, not able to formulate the right information to lead your group. You're going to ultimately lackluster. Your most of your energy is going to be put into trying to keep up the facade. <clears throat> but if what's in your heart is really what you believe in, then leading people to that place is nothing. It's nothing. It is nothing. In fact, it's, it's better than anything else, and there's nothing else you can do. And that's the difference between a natural born leader and someone who's not necessarily a natural born leader. However, you can learn and develop these qualities by trying to lead in things that are aligned with your heart. And um, <clears throat> that's what makes great leaders, guys. That's the reason why these people stay up all super late at night thinking about stuff that and most people are like, what are you, why are you still thinking about this? Like, it's Saturday night, we got stuff going on. It's because that is ultimately who they are. They were born that way. They have a purpose. That's what they love to do, and that's what makes them happy. That's the difference between a leader and a follower. Followers are just as uh, effective as leaders. Followers are just as impactful as leaders. And followers can bring about change just as much as leaders. Because at the end of the day, whether it's a good, per a good follower is going to help the only way you can be a loser and a follower is if you're following a loser. And that's basically it, guys. That's the difference between a leader and a follower. Whew. So I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I had to fade it up a little bit, man. I couldn't let it just, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, that's my time. And thank you all for checking me out again. It's your boy, Diesel. Concluding another one for the people. Hope y'all like this new bathroom cam. More videos on the way, more content on the way. You guys checking in, it's your boy Diesel. Concluding another one for the people. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Signing down. Peace.